Okay, it's yeah. 603. It's 603. Uh, this is uh, a meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen being held in the town hall at 5 Academy Hill Road. Uh, here it is Monday the 23rd. Um, you all have the call-in number and the PIN. I'm just going to read the agenda so everybody knows what we're doing. The first item on the agenda is uh, approval of the more than 16 minutes. Uh, then we have uh, meetings attended by select board members, uh, public comments. Under old business, we have uh, a report on non-emergency declaration, uh, post-emergency declaration, uh, town operations, uh, discussion of state actions, discussion of possible future options. Under new business, we have the appointment of Veronique Blanchard as the Assistant Emergency Management Director, the appointment of Hank Horseman to the uh, Town Hall and Town Office Renovation Committee, uh, the award of awarding the contract to successful bidder of the town hall repair project, the cupola and the front entrance. Uh, we have uh, items unanticipated 48 hours in advance. We have the town administrator update, concerns of the selectmen, mail, and announcements. All right, so that's a run through of the agenda. We're going to start with the um, minutes of the March 16th meeting. Um, Bob and Phil, have you um, reviewed the minutes? Bob, have you had a chance? I, well, I read through them quickly, uh, but, but I, you know, anyway, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Phil, do you have any additions or comments on the minutes? No, there are right. no no meaningful changes. Okay, no meaningful changes. There, with that, I will make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes of March 16th. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, so and I say, I want to hear the roll call vote. Bill? Yes. And John? Yes. I say. Yes, and one abstention, because uh, you weren't here for that, Bob. Okay, next item is meetings attended by select board members. Bill, do you have anything? Yeah, the, um, uh, the Wednesday the 18th, I went to the, the uh, highway committee meeting uh, 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 on invitation because they had the... Uh, the faculty of the tech school there uh, expressing an interest to, in participating in the construction of the town garage. Um, and uh, it, it was uh, very interesting. The committee ended up voting to accept their help, but it will mean more work for the committee, more logistic difficulties. And they had everything all ready to go with the with the contractor being selected and then the contractor would pick the subcontractors of the plumbing and the electric. But now the subcontractors for the plumbing and the electric are effectively going to be the tech school. Um, so, which, which is uh, the faculty members and about eight to 10 students a given day. So there's a whole issues, yeah, a lot of logistics issues with getting them there, not to mention the, the, the uh, the, uh, the, the, the school year possibly being canceled altogether and having to start in September, et cetera, et cetera. But we worked through all the scheduling and um, even, if, uh, even if only the plumbing or only the electric can get done, that would be a, still a six-figure savings. And if they can come and do both the, uh, the plumbing and the electric, they're, they're, they're talking about a savings of close to $300,000. to make life more difficult for themselves um, to achieve those savings because it would have been just easier just to say let's keep things going because it's going to get done and it's already paid for and deals whatever everything's all mapped out so they agreed to complicate their lives significantly for the benefit of the town um, which I think is really impressive and hats off to Kenny um, the police chief we met for getting them on board uh, with such enthusiasm, they really want to participate. The, the, and I was 
shocked to hear the level of desire on their part to participate that this is sort of on their wish list to do a town building uh, and it, they haven't been able to do it yet so um, uh, that was a big 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 meeting and I thought it was going to be a big result for the town um, and uh, and then Friday morning was the uh, finance uh, uh, conference with the town's financial advisor um, uh, discussing the wisdom of keeping the town's investments in the equity markets, um, which was also a very interesting conversation. And uh, and the the town was wise enough to select as their majority stock Kellogg's of all companies, which um, despite the fact that the market has crashed and everything has lost a third to a half of its value, Kellogg's has actually gone up because all of a sudden people are buying cornflakes. Um, so that was good and the town uh, only lost 2% on the stock so far this year after a 6% gain last year so I think the decision is more or less just, just on stock so the decision is more or less to, to keep it in there it's not that big of an exposure um, and yeah but it was an interesting conversation trying to predict the tea leaves of the future and listening to the gentleman's thoughts um, and Jan had some good thoughts on it as well. So, uh, yes, that was my week in meetings. Thank you, Phil. Uh, let me just, before I go into meetings, let me just say that um, Frontier Community Access Television, although not videotaping us tonight, is recording us for audio for future reference. Uh, I could not make the meeting on um, Wednesday with the garage uh, Facilities Committee, uh, but I did meet Thursday with uh, Ron Sweet and uh, Walter Goodrich, and we talked about the, um, the Franklin so Tech School doing doing the work uh, the for the the town garage, and uh, we had a good discussion on it, and I thought it was an excellent idea for them to pursue that even though, um, as Phil mentioned, it was gonna cause them a little more work uh, and perhaps a little bit more time, but uh, I thought the benefits were far outweighed, um, the, the, the risks involved, and uh, I thought they should go ahead with it. So I, I think that's, uh, that's a very good course of action for them. Uh, do we have any public comments? We do. Do we have public comments from anybody? Priscilla. Priscilla, that's your cue. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were uh, saying about what you were just talking about. Um, so I submitted a letter to the select board today. And um, I don't know if you've seen it, read it. I believe you've seen it because I, I think Tom said he would get it to you. Um, and so I don't know what your procedure is from this point forward when someone makes a written request of the board. Well, okay, uh, Priscilla, at this point we're, we're well into, you know, the, um, the Woodlands Partnership. Uh, who's, and certainly, who's speaking, please? Uh, John O'Rourke. Okay. Uh, and, and, cer and certainly as this moves forward, there will be, you know, uh, public meetings for public comment. Um, you know, we, it took us quite a while to look at this and to approve it. Uh, and we think it's a good, uh, good thing for the town to be involved in. There are, I believe, uh, 13 communities involved in this um, in, in uh, Franklin County. Um, and it's being uh, shepherded by the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And as I say, it's, it's been through a number of iterations over the last three years. And uh, we think the plan is beneficial for the town and those who have uh, forested um, properties and, you know, gives them an advantage of what they can do with those properties. And I'll, I'll just add, this, this in particular um, was something um, that, uh, this is Tom Hutchison speaking, uh, that I thought the town had a need for. The last forest management plan we did was uh, almost 20 years ago now. and. Uh, I think that it is essential for uh, the public, for all the residents to, uh, to voice their preferences for
for the style of management for the town forests. I'm absolutely in favor of people, uh, you know, letting the consultant, uh, whoever and whenever it finally gets done, um, know uh, what what the town what the town's people's priorities for the forests are. I know there are uh, that the the current style is for multi-use planning, so that they look at the entirety of the possibilities, including habitat planning and uh, managing, say, for long-term hardwoods or, a, uh, you know, the northern forest ecology. There, there are many different possibilities for the plan. And I think that the people of Conway are going to have a lot to say, a lot of good things to say about the priorities for managing the habitat, and then that can move forward as uh, as as the the guiding principles of the plan itself. So that's my uh, that's my take on it. So what I would say is, what the letter I wrote to the select board uh, it says that what really needs to also be presented as an option and potential priority is the concept of pro-forestation, which is lacking in the forestry presentations. So I, did you not understand that, or did you understand that aspect of the letter? I think that's a fine thing to uh, add to the conversation as it goes forward. So, uh, per, uh, Can facility. you tell me who's speaking, please? Yeah, I was just about to introduce myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> this, is Phil, this is Philip Cantor. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I, I actually um, agree with a lot of what you said in that letter. Um, and w when the Forest Partnership was brought as, as an idea, when membership in this as an idea, the principal selling factor was its, uh, to me, was its green aspects. Its, it, it was sort of presented as, uh, as uh, a point on the path from like for forestry meaning logging to forestry meaning climate change resilience and and that that the the goal of the, the partnership was going to be eventually to be to get us in a place where the state is compensating the towns as as the climate sinks for boston that for the, the carbon sinks to boston that we are um instead of instead of forcing the towns if they desire an income from their forests to log um and I've always understood that that's where we're headed. And I was very disappointed to see that in the grant um, that, that the town was awarded, I don't know if this is what you were mentioning in your letter, I kind of, you know, there was a $20,000 grant that came out of this to the town of Conway. Um, and I was very, very distressed to see what, what I thought was just uh, not enough work put into the, the, the award, you know, that, that it, when I looked at what, we, what the grant gave us, it, it was basically recycling the 1990 town forestry plan, um, except wherever it said in the 1990 plan, benefits of logging, that was crossed out, and now it says benefits of climate change. But it still is the same plan, and the, I, I, was, I was distressed to see that it called for six of the twenty thousand dollars in in Conway's name. The two, uh, it was two payments of six thousand dollars each to two different foresters, who I was told are sort of the house foresters for FERCOG, whatever that means, um, as well as the six thousand dollars to FERCOG to administer the grant. And, and I thought that didn't get us anywhere closer to where we want to be. It didn't advance the purpose that I thought we were getting into the partnership for. Um, and and it, was, it was never presented to us, um, to, as to the select board, for opinion or anything else. It was just, this is what's being done in your name. And, and I have a lot of issues with the person that did this, uh, that whose professional responsibility it is to do this in FERCOG because I believe that person just doesn't work um, effectively with the town that she's representing, um, that, that we should have had input prior to the actual grant being awarded and prior to it all being done. We should have input into what it is we want to do um, rather than it having being done in our name. So um, that's where I stand with that. I, I, I look forward to making improvements 
in the way the partnership works for the town and in advancing what I thought was what the town signed up for, which isn't it so far. So, well, so uh, that's um, interesting for me to hear from you too, but two things you just said that I would speak to, and one was that you were, um, I think you said you were impressed or glad to see that uh, the forestry was moving into address, address and climate change resilience. And I think if you read, you know, in the letter, you will see one of the points is that we're not going to get the climate change resilience in the present climate situation we have, and if we continue to cut our forests. And you also spoke of uh, being compensated for the carbon sinks we have here. If you are cutting our forests, you are taking away our carbon sinks. So, you know, to me, both of those are pretty contradictory. But these are the conversations, I think, that are really important for us all to have and for the people in town to have. And it, to be, have it presented by forestry, which comes from the perspective of cutting and managing in that way, you are just putting the cart before the horse. And so I really feel uh, a need to insist, and I, I, assume, I believe there will be people along the line with me, that a fair and um, open and um, uh, not connected to forestry presentation on pro-forestation is provided to the town members and that the members of this town make the decision about what's going to happen. Well, as I, you see in the letter, there are four forests in this town that are slated now to be extracted from. And if you look at, the wording sounds really good when they talk about sustainability and, you know, building up our, une, our uh, even age forests, uneven age forests. Uh, for sustainability in the future. It's a lot of talk. When you look at the pictures and see what you've done, there, what they've done, there is no sustainable future left there. Just look and see what Fish and Wildlife has done at uh, Muddy Brook down in Harvard. Clear cutting, total, total clear cutting. So what they're selling you, the good, bill of goods they're selling you is not what you're getting. And so I want there to be a fair discussion about this among the people in town. And that's not going to happen if you bring in foresters as the only ones to be presenting this material and talking about this with town, people in town. And it's just not, I don't believe these are decisions for a three-member board. They should be made by the members of the town, the citizens of the town. And I know there's a long history with the Mohawk Trail Partnership. And I know, and I know, and I know. I'm talking about this specifically, that you're, what's being determined here, that what needs to happen in our two town owned forests is forestry. But I think that there needs to be a really open, valid discussion about what are the po potential choices here. You just have to fairly put it on the table. So, so what are the different thank you for your, thank you for your this is John O'Rourke. Thank you for your comments, uh, Priscilla. Uh, certainly, we'll uh, we'll talk to FERCOG uh, and see if we can get some uh, when obviously when the restriction on public meetings is over. Uh, get some public meetings uh, and have our residents uh, uh, come for public comment. So, just one last okay. comment for me. This is Phil, Phil Cantor again, um, Priscilla. The, just so you know, when the, the, when the law pertaining to the town joining the par partnership gave the town two options, gave the select board two options, um, which was to have town meeting do it or to have the select board vote on it. Right. And the select board the select board voted to have the select board vote. Um, and <laughs> so they voted for themselves. Well, they voted for themselves to make the decision, and then the decision right. was made. Um, and, you know, I, I tried to explain sort of the flavor of the decision at that time to me. Um, but the, 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 thing, the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, this, this might be a, a really good thing to do a citizen's petition and get it on the floor of town meeting and have the discussion because every other kind of meeting is going to be informational in nature. But a town meeting could be binding. A decision could be binding. So you ought to think about that um, and, and, and doing a petition and getting it on the town meeting warrant if not this one then next one but 
Okay. So, um, Mr. O'Rourke, I understand you saying that you'll be talking with FERCOG uh, and that yep. um, you will go forward with the public meetings as planned. That's pretty much what it sounded like. Yeah, essentially we'll talk to First Hog and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that um, they have public meetings in town so the residents can express opinions on this program. Okay. So right. are you going to, can I get that in writing or is this just the end of this? We, 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 will, we will get it done, Priscilla. What, what does that mean? But, I don't, I'm sorry. What will you get done? I, I just said I'm just trying to understand. We, 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 will, we, we, will, we will contact First Hog. Yep. And we will ask them to have public meetings here in town okay. on this project so the residents can make comments. Okay. And all right. So, and that's, all right. that's, in the minute, that's in the minutes of this meeting. Yeah. Okay? okay? Okay. So that's the end of that, right? <laughs> well, it's, okay. it's in the minutes. It's in the official minutes of yeah. this meeting. No, I understand. Up. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, thank you. you for your comments. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, hi, this is, this is Bob. Um, my understanding hey, Bob. is that a big part of the grant was to have public meetings. Uh, have, have, have meetings where people are going to come in and talk about what they want the town to do. I, I mean, yeah. the, the tone of this is that everything is all done. And, you know, I mean, we may have made the decision to join the Lola Trail with a partnership, but it has nothing to do with this grant or what the forestry plan is. Is that right? I'm, I, I'm, I'm puzzled. Uh, was there something that was decided last week that I wasn't there for? No, the grant was part of the partnership. The uh, grant was out of the partnership's grant application. Well, it was, but the grant was the whole public hearing where people are going to come in and talk about what Conway wants to do with the two Conway forests, not the state forests, the two Conway forests. Yeah, and and I think I think uh, Priscilla did make that distinction uh, towards the end of uh, her presentation. Uh, yeah, I I don't see that that they're at all locked up any past plan. The whole point of this is to come up with a new plan that does include uh, resident priorities. And I think there's a lot of creativity in town, a lot of knowledge in town that uh, can be brought out and made uh, made part of the part of the process and part of the plan. All right, any other comments on that? All right, we'll go to the next item on the agenda. Uh, old business, we have report on post-emergency declaration town operations. Tom, what do we have? Yeah, I thought it would be good to let people know uh, and the, uh, the board here has a copy of this. Uh, what some of the town offices are doing now, uh, just so that people have an idea of, uh, of town office and town hall operations in this difficult time. Uh, first, I think in general, all is going smoothly with town staff. Uh, there are no problems with the public safety operations. Everything's up and running the way it always has been. Uh, in the town administrator's office, uh, we posted the emergency declaration to the web on Monday evening, along with the public statement that the select board had passed. I also forwarded both of those documents to the recorder Monday night. Uh, Lisa emailed the logistics memo about getting on conference calls to a large email list on Tuesday. And uh, Lynn and I are currently getting the mail, one of the... Uh, things we have to keep moving here uh, physically in the town. Uh, Lisa now is working as much as possible from home and is continuing to coordinate with Roy. Uh, I understand her, uh, her laptop was proving difficult, but I think that's been overcome at this point. Uh, for the treasurer and tax collector, I have some notes on the, on the Friday call. Uh, that uh, Phil described, so I, I won't. Uh, uh, in the town clerk's office, uh, Lori Lucier is in as usual. She does a lot of work on the state computer, uh, which is, is uh, as far as I know, she, she does not have remote access to, so she does need to come into the office. Uh, but also because she does a lot of um, 
paperwork. Um, she can get remote access if she wishes, uh, but right now she's doing a sufficient amount from her, sufficiently insulated from others that uh, she feels comfortable coming into the office. Um, for the assessors, Uh, Laura is now working from home with some phone access and soon some email access to her smartphone. She does not currently have home internet. Uh, she had been coming in uh, last week to the office. Uh, there was really no one else in the office when she was there, so that was a fairly comfortable situation for her. But now, however, she's working mostly from home. And, and we all have uh, access to our telephones remotely as well, so we can get phone messages. Uh, regarding the Board of Health, uh, the Board of Health, rather than the Emergency Management Director, seems to be at the center of state communications and work with towns. The Chair of the Board of Health and its members are working with the Emergency Management Director, of course, especially now with a weekly conference call. Um, I'll, I'll mention, uh, I should have started with, uh, we, um, we have arranged for con three conference lines for town committees, uh, and we hope that will allow a good deal of work to, uh, to proceed as usual. Uh, based on a state request for information on local public safety needs for materials and equipment, I set up a conference call Friday with the Board of Health Chair, the EMD, and Public Safety Departments. Uh, the ambulance will need more personal protective equipment at some point, but is doing all right so far. Other departments do not have large stores, so we have asked for additional personal protective equipment, especially masks that have clear panels to protect the eyes for the ambulance crew. The Board of Health submitted a request to the state so we're queued up for any distribution through that channel. The, and that, that is our main contact with the State Department of Public Health is our own Board of Health. So they're really the ones that all of that communication is coming through at this point. So we, we did have that call and we now have a call between those folks scheduled as a weekly check-in as well. Uh, the outlook as I see it, um, the state is anticipating a substantial impact from the pandemic on revenue for FY21, which would result in cuts to FY21 local aid, including probably Chapter 70, from which we get about a million dollars a year. School budgets are at this point not being finalized until the state advises on FY21 local aid. Uh, the Conway Grammar School Stabilization Account, which of course is meant for emergency equipment repair, does have $276,000 in it. The town side of the budget will fare somewhat better, as Conway was scheduled to get about $253,000 in general government aid, and as we currently have about $268,000 in general stabilization, so if the impact were just on the town side, we could be reduced to zero state aid and suffer only from Chapter 90 being reduced. However, since the impact of the school is potentially much larger, the town may be called on to support the Conway Grammar School more than usual during this time. Uh, and I am assuming for purposes of planning, the town meeting will be delayed. So we're planning to get the fiscal year 2019 town report out on time. Pending le legislation would make delaying town meeting easier, uh, and it would also allow towns to keep operating beyond June 30th by allowing town without a budget by allowing towns to spend on a month by month basis one twelfth of their fiscal year 20 budgets. So things don't look great, but there is a path forward for towns that were otherwise going to be squeezed by legislation. Um, and uh, not able to conduct business as usual. It looks as though we will be able to go forward. We're just looking at some potentially substantial cuts based on decreased state revenues and therefore possibly decreased 
local aid from the state. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, this is John O'Rourke. Just to add to what Tom said, um, I've been in almost daily contact with our emergency management director to make sure that uh, we're, we're keeping up to date on everything we need to and uh, certainly the status of our residents as far as the, uh, the uh, coronavirus. Uh, I also have a, a meeting tomorrow with the police chief on uh, a matter I won't go into detail now, uh, but I want to talk to him about a couple of things moving forward. Um, okay, so that's all we have for that item. Next is discussion of state actions. Uh, Tom, what do we have? Uh, you may have seen recently a number of uh, executive orders uh, from the governor. There was uh, one that came out just today uh, prohibiting assemblages of more than 10 people and on-premises consumption of food and beverages. Uh, this is uh, up on the Conway website, uh, www.townofconway.com, as are some other documents that have come out recently, including Conway's own uh, emergency declaration. So I urge people to look at that. Uh, again, most of the action and information at this point coming from the state is either directly from the governor or from the Department of Public Health. So uh, the Mass Department of Public Health also has an excellent website on the disease and uh, a lot of the official information from the Commonwealth is put on that website. Very easy to navigate. Uh, it's mass.gov, mass.gov, that's the normal state website, slash COVID19. There's no hyphen there, it's just COVID19. So mass.gov slash COVID19 is, a, is the uh, is a great website for official information from the state. Thank you, Tom. Uh, discussion of future options. Did we already go into that. Well, I really, I, I'm wondering what the uh, what the criteria might be for uh, determining when, if and when, to uh, delay town meeting. Uh -huh. I can see it as, as I think that criteria has been reached, and I sit, and I say just right off, right away. Right, I mean, we know we can't have it in the grammar school. That's the, the school will be closed to the public then, but the, 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 still by May in May 11th. I I uh, am also of that opinion. Um, it, the, it is the moderator's call, right? I <laughs> It, it, it's a little bit awkward for us because we're in a we're in a situation where our moderator is actually moving out of town, and we do not have anyone on the ballot. Of course, the ballot, the election, the town election is technically part of town meeting. Right. Three days later, so if we delay town meeting, we're also delaying the town election. So any moderator we do have for the first town meeting after this gets over will probably have to be elected from the floor. Yeah, that's true. There's supposed to be a new state law or executive order about municipal elections coming out in the next day or two. Um, yes, and some will be there may be the possibility to vote by mail, which should be very interesting. That would allow us to post an election warrant separate from the town meeting warrant. Mm -hmm. So okay. we could actually have an election by mail without having the the normal. <laughs> All right. you know, there's a lot of pending legislation. Uh, nothing signed yet, so we're all keeping our eyes on that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I thought as 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 a possible substitute uh, location, you might want just to pretend the, the the new the new uh, highway facility is a big indoor with the with the vehicles removed. Have it in the daytime. Um, and uh, you could keep, if it's, you know, you get fresh air through the thing too. But I think that that would be, I'm trying to think of any other, other than that, it's the field. And uh, difficult to hear. But, um, but you know, 
the other thing is that you know with the, the, the CDC, everybody else is coming out with, uh, with with planning tools for for local governments, estimating worst case scenarios, estimating moderate scenarios, and estimating best case scenarios, and how to plan. And to me, our planning is still only really on best case scenario grounds. Um, because worst case scenario is two thirds of the town gets this disease and a mortality rate of ten percent. Right, well, well, but Phil, Phil, let let let's not even go into that. But 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 that's it's it's our responsibility to plan, to make plans. Phil, Phil it, it, we're, and it, we're, we're, we're like we're a long way off from that. So we're not a long way off. We're a week or two away from Phil, it. Phil, we're it, a long way off from ten percent of the town dying of the the virus. Okay. Um, let's just, all right, let's not go into that. Well, 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 what's the purpose of discussion of possible future options on the agenda then? Is that, the, is that what your in, intent is? Just do nothing? Just keep, keep doing what we're doing? No, that's not my intent, Phil. But we're not going to discuss it now, all right? Okay. Well, next item on the agenda. We have new business. Uh, we need to appoint uh, Veronique Blanchard as the Assistant Emergency Management Director. Uh, from our emergency management director that she's doing a, a great job helping him. So um, I would uh, make a motion that we appoint Veronique Blanchard as the assistant emergent man emergency management director until 6-30-2020. That's just a couple of months. Do I have a second? Yes. I roll call. Phil yes. said aye. John O'Rourke says aye. Okay. So she. Bob. Bob. And I say Bob. aye. Aye. You say aye. Aye. Yeah. It's unanimous. Thank you, Bob. So thank you very much. Yes. Yep. Next item is to appoint Hang Horseman uh, to the Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee for term ending 6:30-21. I know that Hank is doing an outstanding job on the um, um, the Highway Facilities Committee, and uh, I'm sure he'd be a, a, quite a benefit to the Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee. Um, I'll make a motion that we appoint him uh, for term ending 6-30-21. Philip? Yes. Uh, Philip says yes. Bob? Aye, yes. Thank okay, you. and I and I say yes as well. So that's a unanimous vote to appoint Hank Horseman to the Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee. All right, next we have the award of the contract to the successful bidder for the Town Hall Repair Project. Tom, you want to give us some info on this? Yes, I think I gave you the, uh, the quote register. From the folks that came in, uh, the uh, road bidder was La Rochelle Construction from South Hadley. Uh, they provided five references. I called them up. Four of them used the word excellent. Uh, and the other gave that impression as well. So I think we're uh, we're good to go ahead. It looks like both a responsive bidder who bid on the project as described and a responsible bidder who has the So I... Uh, How many bids did we get? How many bids did we get? At five bids. Did you get this sheet? It's, yeah, it was in really small print though. Um, oh, okay. Fine here. Yeah, so five bids. Uh, one was non-responsive. One exceeded the funding available. Uh, and of the three others, um, this was substantially lower than the other two, which worried me at first. That's why I made sure to uh, dig uh, a little bit more deeply than otherwise into the reference. And I was very pleased that some of them said, yeah, they were really cheap and really good. So I'm, uh, I was pleased with that result. And those were from housing, uh, two housing authorities, one in, in, uh, one in Holyoke, I believe, and one in Greenfield. So there were two, uh, uh, well, three public projects.
two were from the Holyoke Housing Authority, but the reference from one was from an architect and uh, who worked with them on as the designer of the project, and one was from the Housing Authority itself. So uh, public sector work as well. And what what was the um, the uh, CP, CPA funding for this? What was the amount? Forty-five thousand. Forty-five thousand, and that was based on an understanding that that's what the number would be. These folks? No, 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 no. The forty-five thousand was based on the CPA committee's understanding of what the bid would be. Malcolm had received right. some previous none of which um, was as much as forty-five thousand. But because he understands the project sometimes get more complicated than they originally look, um, that was what we proposed for the funding amount. And was, was with was this one of the ven the contractors that he had discussed uh, talked to, or is this something? It's not. It was new. This is another one of those things when you look at it, you think it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> um, uh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, which always makes me nervous. Sometimes they are true, and sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Same thing with the the tech school doing the, the garage. It sounds too good to be true. Um, but uh, yeah. So um, if that's that, um, uh, and 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 Malcolm and Malcolm knows about this by now, and he's. Duly impressed with the bid, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, well, let's just say that Malcolm knows about it. <laughs> leave it at leave it at that. Okay. Um, you know, certainly certainly based on the process we went went through for for a, a bid, and the fact that we received five bids, and uh, based on the references of the low bidder, uh, I would I would. Uh, make a motion that we approve this contract. Philip, do I have a second? Yes. Robert? Aye. Uh, aye. Philip? Yes. Aye. And Tom and I as well. So that's unanimous. items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? I do not. Okay. Do you have a town? Uh, most of my update uh, already occurred by a uh, description of what's been going on in town office and town hall and making sure that this can proceed as much as usual as possible. that Phil already mentioned as well, so I'll be brief about that. Uh, the Highway Facility Committee is continuing and intends to move forward with its general bid now April 9th. So there's a delay uh, because of the, the recent change in the, uh, the sub-bidder category. The, the town rejected all the sub-bids after the Franklin County Tech came in and persuaded the town to take them on. Uh, so uh, we expect the notice of award to be April 21st, the contract execution on April 30th. So in five weeks, we should have a contract with the winning bidder on the highway maintenance building. They have a 180 degree, 180 day um, uh, time period in which to complete the project, which would be on uh, or about October 30th. Uh, and in departmental news, uh, the treasurer has requested a revision to the sick day policy that I that I sent uh, that we did before in order to simplify her record keeping. Probably just earning the days back uh, one to one, rather than half the year in time relieving the deficit and half the time going to new hours. Um, so this could leave a significant gap if someone has a new illness. I think we'll just uh, deal with that if it happens, and uh, hope that neither of these, um, neither of these uh, um, possibilities is is true. That people exceed their sick day limit, and that they then further sick days afterwards. So uh, we're uh, probably pretty well prepared. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring that back next week. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm also considering requesting to cap the 
um, okay, but but she she can't have anybody inside and sell them anything inside. Uh, I understand. It's, it's, it's only for takeout. Right, I, but it seems like a shame that her business, her 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 business is not typically occupied by by a huge number of people. Yeah, that's a, that, that is a bigger bite at the Apple. That is that is a considerably bigger bite at the Apple. Very bold. Let's do the first letter first. Sure. All right, so, you know, certainly we would ask our residents to uh, support uh, not only Barbara's business, the Conway Inn, but also the Baker store. Um, Helen is also doing takeout. Um, I think uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So uh, certainly in this time of real emergency, let us all support our two local businesses uh, that provide consumer goods. Okay, next item. Uh, mail. We already went over the, um, the letter by our resident, uh, Priscilla Lynch. Okay, we discussed that. Uh, any announcements? Bob, you have anything? Bill, anything? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, next meeting is scheduled for Monday, March 30th, um, town in Town Hall here uh, at 6 p.m. Um, Comcast binder for? Uh, we, 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 uh, Bob, you'll be interested. We just got a binder from Comcast with, the, with their proposal. I have not gotten it as an electronic document, though. You might ask Eileen for that the next time. Thank you. I will. Uh, okay, yeah, that's for us to, to go over. Uh, all right. If there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Philip? Okay. Yes. And Bob? Aye. Okay. All right. We are adjourned.